Right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host and presenter today uh, of Encompass Live here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning um, at 10 a.m. Central Time, but it is recorded every week, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show, and it is posted later for you to watch at your convenience. And um, uh, while we're here, I'll show you on our, um, uh, this is our Encompass Live website here. Uh, both the live show and the our recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So uh, please share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think may be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. Our archive shows, our upcoming shows are here on our website. So you can see the ones coming up for the next couple of months. Our archive, a link to our archives is right here at the bottom. And it's most recent ones first. Today's recording will be at the top there, should be up by the end of the day tomorrow. Um, I'll email everyone who attended today's show and um, registered for today's show to let you know when it's available. We'll also push it out to our Twitter and Facebook page that we have for Encompass Live. Um, you can search our show archives. If you want to see if we've done what we've done, um, if we've done shows on other topics, um, anything you might be interested in. Uh, I'm not going to scroll all the way down here, but just be aware our show archives, these go back all the way to when Encompass Live first premiered, which was in January 2009. So we are 15 years in. Wow. And um, we have all of our recordings here up on our YouTube channel. So uh, just pay attention if you do watch an archive show um, to the original broadcast date. Uh, some of the shows, may, it's all listed here. It always, it always tells you when it was first broadcast. Uh, some, of the, some of the shows may stand the test of time, still be good, useful information. Some things may be cold, become old, outdated, information has changed, links might not work anymore, resources and services may be totally different. Uh, people might not work at the same library they worked at when they permit, sent it to us with us 10, 15 years ago. So um, just be aware of that if you're watching any of our archives. Um, here at the Library Commission, we provide services to all types of libraries in the state. So we do have shows on Encompass Live that would be for any type of library, public, academic, K-12, um, colleges, universities, historical societies. Really, our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. Uh, something cool that libraries are doing, uh, something we think they could be doing. Uh, we bring guest speakers on sometimes to talk about things they're doing in their library to share um, their experiences. Um, we also have a Nebraska Library Commission staff that do presentations for us about things we're doing here through the Library Commission. And that's what we're doing today. Today, as I mentioned earlier, I am your presenter, just me today. <laughs> And we are this morning going to be talking about the public library accreditation process, uh, public library accreditation that libraries in Nebraska can apply for. Um, as um, here at the Nebraska Library Commission, at the Library Commission, I am the library development director. That is my official title. And part of library development is doing um, accreditation for libraries. So this is a uh, program that I run. Um, and uh, keep track of. So I'd be the person who'd be in contact with about anything related to accreditation. Um, we're going to talk to today, we're going to do uh, just a short one hour um, inf basic information about the accreditation process. We do have other trainings coming up as well. I'm going to go over here to our Library Commission website. So you can see if you go to our calendar up here at the top of our um, website, it goes to our training and events calendar. It's also been emailed out to people. And if you search here for Accreditation 2023 and hit search, you will see all the workshops we have coming up. Um, the one we're on doing today, which is about accreditation, which is um, this one hour session. But I do have coming up our full in-depth workshops next week and the week after. Um, these are three hour workshops, as you can see here, uh, four different days. Um, it is not a four <laughs> a workshop session. Each workshop is gonna be the same thing done every day, each session. Uh, so you do not have to attend all four. You can just pick whichever one is best for you. Um, I scheduled multiple ones. On, multiple dates and times, hopefully that people can find one a time that is convenient for them. 
there will be a recorded session of the three hour one as well after all the live sessions have been done too if none of these dates and times works for you um, so today we're doing um, a nice overview and intro to the process and we'll get if you want to learn a lot more and get more in depth uh, i recommend you also register for one of the three hour workshops coming up So um, I have links here in the event page to our accreditation website and our community's response plan website. Those are the two main things that um, accreditation is all about. So we are going to start just going right to the um, Nebraska Public Library accreditation webpage here. So as you can see here, um, the process starts July 1st of each year. So we are today and this month doing training ahead of time so you can get yourself prepared and ready and know what you might need uh, when the process officially, op officially opens up on July 1st. Um, so you can get a head start on everything. Uh, this website has everything you need to know about accreditation and we're gonna go through, as I said, some of the things here. Um, I looked up who all is uh, registered for today's show and I'm just double checking. And almost everybody is due for a reaccreditation this year. And I know some of you who are watching are unaccredited. That's great. We'd love to have more libraries become accredited. So we'd love to have you. And I know we've got some people that are looking for into the future. They're going to be up for reaccreditation at their library in a few in a few years. Um, but this will be good information for everybody. So uh, the first thing I'm sure you may ask or wonder is why should I become accredited? Why should my library uh, become accredited. And I've talked to libraries about this a lot. We, we, I, I get this question often, uh, but I have um, added that what I always talk to libraries about onto the webpage so that you know you can refer to this. Um, if you are wondering why am I doing this, why am I going through all this work, uh, uh, if you need to talk to any uh, local stakeholders, people on your library board, people in your community, your city council members wondering why you're spending all this time. This is this is all the reasons here. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can refer them to this or you can just uh, borrow this wording and send it out in emails to people. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, public library accreditation, and I'll also clarify something too. I should say first, this is not a national program dictated to us by any other organization. It does not come from ALA, the American Library Association, or from IMLS, Institute of Museum and Library Services at the federal level. Um, those are both you know, organizations that do have things for libraries. Uh, public library accreditation is something done just locally here in Nebraska. Uh, so, <coughs> excuse me, I am, we are in charge of it here. We run the program, we created it for our libraries. It, there are some other states that also have accreditation in their libraries for their libraries and some that do not. So if you possibly worked in another state, you might not have never heard, you may have never heard of this because it didn't exist. Um, or you or in other states programs may be completely different from what we have here in Nebraska. So I just want to clarify this is just coming straight here from the Library Commission. There is nowhere else that is um, that we have to follow any other standards from anywhere else. We have created the standards for this program here in Nebraska, specifically for our Nebraska libraries. So um, these standards that I mentioned, these are um, things that, and that's one of the big thing, one of one of the big things about um, becoming accredited. These are standards that were created and came up with um, by other library professionals. Um, back the, now this program is actually before my time. <laughs> I've been here at the Library Commission. Uh, for over 20 years and we've been doing accreditation long before I was um, came here um, but it is library other library professionals came up with what would be the criteria you need to meet to become accredited so it is showing at your community that you are reaching for these certain goals that there are certain standards that here at the library commission and with we worked with other library like I said library directors and library staff across the state to determine what would be like the minimum criteria for a library to become accredited and then what could be um, a little upper level criteria to be a little higher accredited so these are guidelines that were developed um, and they have changed over the years so we do try and keep up with changes in technology and services and whatnot so they are not still the same uh, criteria that we started with 
So it's something as I have here to be proud of and to celebrate saying that we did these things and other professionals, our colleagues have said, this is what makes a great library and we are doing these things. So there are some minimum standards you have to meet. Um, you have to keep up these standards. So you don't just do this once and then you're done. You have to maintain what you're doing at your library. As I mentioned, there is some reaccreditation. Um, and it, you know, as I said, you can show to your community, show to your library board, to your mayor, your city um, administrator, here's what we have done and we have reached these, these goals and met these guidelines and we got this, uh, you get a certificate, <laughs> you get a certificate in the mail, so um, that shows this. Uh, library accreditation is valid for five years, um, so every five years you do have to renew. Um, it was three years. We did make a change it, last year. There were some changes made to the program last year. So if you've done accreditation previously, you may have heard about a three-year process. Um, it is now valid for five years. We uh, had heard from many libraries and we agreed that three years were not a long enough time for things to have changed in your community for you to just you know to do the to come up with new goals and and see what was cha what has changed and if you're meeting these guidelines so um we expanded it to five years this also came out of the um covid19 pandemic we actually put a pause on accreditation for two years where libraries did not have to renew. Um, there's plenty of things going on in the first two years of the pandemic that we did not need, I did not need libraries to be worrying about this as well. So we actually gave, we did one year extensions to everyone's accreditation expiration dates. So everyone then was like four years and then we did a second year of that. Um, we came back last year for the first time after since the pandemic has started um, to pick it up again. So everyone ended up with five years because of us giving everyone two year extensions. So we just made that official. So now you only have to do uh, reaccreditation every five years. Um, other benefits here. Um, uh, so being proud, you know, bragging rights. You to look what we did. We, we met these criteria, these guidelines, um, but also money money's important <laughs> and there are certain things that you can only apply for certain um, grants and um, money that you can receive only you can only receive it if your library is accredited so um, state aid to public libraries uh, this is something that we offer through here we get funding from the state legislature that is specifically to give out to libraries um, in order to receive state aid you have to be accredited um, and then if you are accredited at a higher level, we have bronze, silver, and gold levels, um, you get a slightly more um, state aid just for having reached that um, level, um, an extra $200 for silver, an extra $400 for gold. Um, you need, you um, in order to apply for our grants here that we offer through the Library Commission, you have to be accredited. This is our continuing education and CE grants, um, CE and training grants, <coughs> excuse me, internship grants, library improvement grants and youth grants for excellence. Now I will mention that in the last um, couple of years, uh, last year we did have special grants from um, through the American Rescue Plan Act, also uh, you know due to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic and the rules for those grants we could did not um, have the requirement that you had to be accredited. So if you did receive grants last year, those ARPA grants that we gave out, you will notice if you look through that information about it from um, last year's grants, that accreditation was not a requirement. But that was only when we had that special funding through those um, the special um, funding from the federal government. Uh, we don't have that anymore. They have not done a new one. So now we're back to our regular rules where you do need to be accredited to, to apply for our library commission grants. Um, addition, in addition to that, uh, the um, USDA, Nebraska USDA, and then a Department of Economic Development have decided for their particular grants that they do want you to be an accredited library as well. So there are community development block grants and USDA grants and loans. Both of these are for construction facilities, your buildings. Um, libraries are eligible to apply for them. Um, so if you're doing any sort of uh, thinking of doing any sort of building a new library, renovating, expansions, um, any sort of construction type thing, these are some grants that you could apply for from here in Nebraska, but you do need to be an accredited public library in order to apply for them. So why become accredited? Bragging rights and money. I guess that would be the two big things. Now, as I mentioned, uh, anybody have any questions about any of that? You can type into your questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Mm 
All right. So as I mentioned, the process starts um, each July. We actually started training ahead of that, of course, as we are doing now with this um, workshop, this Encompass Live, and then our um, upcoming workshops. But officially on July 1st, I send an email out to all libraries who are up for or due for reaccreditation and any of that have not been accredited before but have submitted the public library survey. So that is really your first um, goal, first criteria that you have to meet uh, before even thinking about accreditation, if you've never done it before, is to make sure you do that public library survey. Um, this is something that if you um, attended trainings or received emails from Sam Shaw, he's in charge of the public library survey that we do, and you must submit that. And we have a supplemental survey to that here in Nebraska where we ask a few more questions. So if you have submitted that, then you'll get an email from me inviting you to apply for accreditation for the first time. Uh, the survey is wrapped up in February. So for this upcoming year, um, that's all done. Uh, you can't submit one now and then get into the process. So hopefully um, you already did that. Um, if you haven't, look to next year when they open up. They usually open up, the public library survey usually opens up in um, November, I believe. Uh, all right. And when, um, and I'll go, I'm going to scroll down here at the bottom because we're talking about libraries who are currently up for reaccreditation and libraries who are not. Um, if you scroll to the bottom of our page here, we do have a link to the Nebraska Public Library Accreditation Status. This is, um, a list of all public libraries in Nebraska, all libraries that we know of, and whether they are accredited, at what level, and when they expire. So if you're not sure when your library is due, go here and look it up. Uh, so you can see here we have uh, right here at the top, um, Albion is due is uh, at silver level, second level, and they're due this year. And we also list what library system you are part of, um, where you are geographically in the state. Um, any libraries with blanks, that means they're not accredited yet. Um, but as I said, we'd, any library who has who submits that uh, public library survey will be officially invited to apply. So this is not something that you can just go out and do the form and uh, say, I want to be accredited. You have to wait for me to send you the email that says you have been invited because you've met our basic criteria of submitting that public library survey. Uh, okay. Uh, the So I'll invite you in July 1st to get that email, and then there are two things you need to submit to me that I'm going to get to a little more detail about in a few minutes here. There is an online accreditation application form, and there is a community needs response plan, which is a um, document that you um, write up and email to me, and I'll get into more detail about that, kind of like a, a strategic plan, a guide for your library. Those two items are due by October 1st of the of this year. You must have both those submitted. And then I will, as soon as I receive both of those, I will start evaluating them. I look at them both together. There are things in your application um, that refer back to the community's response plan. So they do work together. Um, so I will, once I have both of those, I start evaluating them. And then I will, um, as soon as I have them, I'll, I'll do that. I don't wait till October 1st. So if you send both of them in like July 2nd, <laughs> uh, if you're right on top of things, I will immediately then start working on uh, looking at your um, documents. And by the end of the year, at the very latest, December 31st, I will have gotten back to you about um, whatever, um, if you are renewed or if you are newly accredited. Um, so accreditation runs for the full year. So libraries who are due for accreditation in 2023, you are accredited through December 31st, 2023. So this, you're working on getting your new accreditation that will start in 2024 for the next five year period. So there are some basic uh, requirements uh, before you can be invited to apply. As I mentioned already, there is the public library survey and the our own supplemental survey. You have to submit both of those. Uh, Sam Shaw figures out if you've done that and then he sends me the list so I know who can be invited this year. Um, even if you are currently accredited, you do still have to keep submitting the survey every year. Um, if you don't, you can lose your accreditation. You, it can be if you do not keep up with submitting that survey. Um, now, we do not do these things just, you know, 
in stone, hard line where, oh, they didn't submit it, cut them off. It is, you didn't submit it. I will reach out to you and find out why. Sam will reach out to you and try and help you get these things submitted, especially if you are currently accredited. We don't want you to lose that accreditation and lose any of these um, uh, benefits of being accredited. Um, so we will work with you on that uh, as best as we can. Um, if you have certain issues uh, happening in your library, uh, natural disasters, <laughs> Um, just you're you're a new library director who just started like in July. I would not make you you know force you to go through accreditation. You know we give extensions. Um, as I said, we give extensions for the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, in 29 we gave lots of extensions. Uh, 2019, if you rec if everyone remembers when we had the flooding in Nebraska, that was you know many libraries were like I got so much on my plate, no problem. We can bump you um, for another year. We do as I said, there is no um a you know, national organization, national um, group telling us where to how to do this. This is all us. So here at the Library Commissions, we will work with you if there are any extenuating circumstances that for some reason why you couldn't get your survey in or why you're just not able to get your re-accreditation done this year just due to things going on. So just um, keep in touch, let me know. But the basics are submit that survey and the supplemental survey. Um, and then there are 12 minimum qualifications before you can even start the accreditation application form. And um, as you can see here, we've got this nice, right now the application form is not even available. It's not, it doesn't go live until July 1st. So um, we're just looking at a static page here showing um, what are the basic criteria. Um, So you must meet these 12 minimum qualifications first. There is also, you'll notice here, and when you are in the actual application form itself, the online form, there you will see in some places this little yellow question mark, um, yellow circle with question mark in it. If you click on that, that opens up a new page that has help guides. Um, and it has interest for some of the questions on the application form, not every one of them. Um, and it will give you links to things. In, so you can have some more information if you're wondering, well, what does that mean? What does legal established mean? Well, it means you, you've met the criteria and these specific statutes. There are certain statutes in Nebraska, um, Nebraska state laws that govern how libraries are legally established. Um, and you can find them here. So you'll find help there for all these different things. So um, first you have to be legally established. Um, legally established means you had, there was some sort, at some point in time in the past, there was a resolution, an ordinance, something was, you know, something officially done by your municipality, whether it's the city, township, county, village, whatever, stating we are creating a public library. And then the second thing is you have to have a library board that has a minimum of five members. That's the two things, then you're legally established. Um, you have to be in compliance with any other Nebraska library laws or any other local um, or federal laws that affect libraries. Um, as I mentioned, there are specific library laws um, and you'll find the links in that help there. Uh, you have to have a library board and follow the Open Meetings Law, um, Open Meetings Act, um, rules. Uh, we actually did an Encompass Live about the Open Meetings Act um, last year. So I recommend go taking a look at that and see to learn more about that. Um, your board needs to be certified and your director needs to be certified. And these are two things I'll get into a little closer. Um, this is meeting certain criteria here at the commission um, and doing continu and continuing education work, um, keeping up with um, you know, professional development. Um, you have to receive local funding from whoever is your local funder, uh, city, village, township, county, some, somewhere, um, any or, or all of those, uh, depending on your situation. As I mentioned, you got to do that public library survey and the supplemental survey. Uh, you have to have paid library staff. You cannot be a volunteer run library to be accredited. You have to have staff that receive a salary. Um, you can have volunteers work at the library, that's okay. Um, we know we have, um, many libraries have volunteers, uh, sometimes library board members help out and they don't get compensated, um, that's okay. 
if you need to do that on a temporary basis for certain hours, that's fine. As you see, it says here during all scheduled hours, but of course there will be situations where uh, you can't be there. So a volunteer is running the library for the morning or you go to a conference or a web workshop for a day and a volunteer helps out that one day, that's okay. It's just on a regular basis, as far as your regular schedule is, there's always a, someone who's paid who works the, at the library. Uh, the director has to check their email. You, um, you have an email address that is used and checked regularly. That is how we communicate with you. Um, that may seem like a strange thing for some people that, of course, I have an email. That's how we do things. Well, for some places, it is. Um, so for some people, it's not. Um, and it had been difficult over the years sometimes to get in touch with library directors and we do not have the ability here to call everyone on the phone. Um, we have almost 300 public libraries in the state and that's just not something that's going to happen uh, or to mail things out to all of them. So we do communicate via email. You need to check your email and you need to be responding when we reach out to you for things. Um, you have to provide your basic services um, at no charge. This is uh, one of the Nebraska state statutes actually states this, that public libraries must not charge residents um, for basic circulation of materials, um, using, um, you know, providing reference services to them, you know, resources, um, and number 11 here, access to the internet at no charge. You cannot charge people to use your internet um, service. It has to be free. So these are just the things that have to be free. Other things, yes, you can pay for. You can charge, of course, you could do you know, late fees, um, charging for workshops, um, sometimes for materials and things, for registering, that's okay. These are just the things you cannot charge for per state statute. Um, and you have to do an annual report to whoever is your governing body, your local government. Um, that's also a state statute. It is supposed to be done by February of each year. So at some point you have to, uh, before February of a new year, um, so sometime in January or February, um, just submit a report to whoever um, is in charge of your library, city, village, township, county, whoever. Um, I did not require you to send me that report. You just check this box and say, yes, I am doing it. Um, so those are the 12 minimum criteria just to even get into the accreditation application form that you have to check off. Um, any questions about that, about the qualifications? I'm not going to get much into the public library survey. Uh, Sam handles that. Uh, if you have any questions about that, submitting the survey, questions on the survey or the supplemental survey, you can reach out to Sam Shaw about those uh, with any questions you have for those. But do you have any questions about the qualifications for okay. those 12 minimum for becoming accredited? If you have a question, you can go ahead and type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. There's questions or chat, whichever one works for you. Or if you have a microphone of your own on your computer that you know works, uh, let me know and I can unmute you and you can ask your question that way. I saw someone did have their hand raised, but um, let me know if you'd like to unmute or if just you're going to type in a question. I can't see if you're all typing. It doesn't show me that. I have to wait until the whole message comes up. So. All right. Um, since we are talking about the qualifications here, I am going to go into uh, certification that was mentioned there. Um, I hope it's been a new link. Oh, oh there's a question. Ah, uh, judging for. Ah, okay, uh, good question. Yes, uh, someone is, uh, Denise has a question. What about charging for cards for non-city residents? Is that okay? 
Um, yes, that is okay uh, um, that you have a lot, many libraries do do that. That is perfectly fine. Um, you're just charging them to access, you know, to be able to use your library because they are not, um, and actually uh, that's not a problem because as you can see here, the wording here says basic services to residents that supply tax support. So you would be having um, anyone who is in your tax area pays pays money you know to your tax district you would not be giving charging them giving them making them get a non-resident card because they are a resident non-residents that's okay so that is this is only you have to just make sure that it's free to your um own residents yeah which is perfect thank you yes it's perfectly fine to charge non-city residents because it's specifically states that you your own residents that you have to make sure that it's free for All right, so um, director and board being certified. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Um, let's see, let me get back to there. So back to our Library Commission homepage. If you look here, you'll notice there is a menu item on our a menu on our website here for accreditation and certification. And if you look there, you'll see that we have board certification, library certification, and library accreditation all grouped together. That is because board certification and library certification feed into library accreditation. Um, as you can see what I just showed you, it is required for your board to be certified and your library director to be certified. Uh, some people get confused about this. Um, about certification and accreditation, the wording of it. And my predecessor, Richard Miller, said um, people can would, would explain it this way. People are certifiable, but buildings are not. So only people can be certified and your library building is accredited. So that's the way you can possibly remember it. <laughs> um, but if you reach out to me about my librarian accreditation, I will clarify what you're talking about, about you as a person or your library as a building. So we do have information here about your board and your librarian certification um, because they are required for your library to be accredited. Um, board certification, um, we do have where you can look up your library board status. So just like we were looking at the accreditation status, so you can check and see what is the current stand, um, standing. Um, if your board is um, certified and when they are due for recertification um, and or whether it has expired. And you can see some are expired um, recently, some a while ago. Um, and some libraries who just have never gone through the process. This is all a voluntary process, certification for boards, certification for librarians, and accreditation is all voluntary. So uh, you will see some boards that just haven't um, gone through um, the process of doing it. So you can check and see what your board situation is there. And if you click on your library's name, you will see where they are um, currently, um, what items have been submitted to us for continuing education that the board members have um, attended, how many um, hours they have and how many are needed and when they are due for recertification. So you can see here Ainsworth, and this all comes from information that you provide to us. Um, they're halfway there. Uh, they've done 10 hours and they need 10. Um, library boards need our board certification and librarian certification renew on a three year cycle. And um, library boards have to do 20 hours of a continuing education credit in that three years. This is 20 hours um, as a group, not 20 hours per person. So um, you have five members <coughs> of your board. Each of them has to do like four hours and um, you'll have um, more than enough. Um, in a whole three-year period. So it doesn't take too much. You just have to keep up with things. Um, back to the main page here. There we go. Um, we have a library board manual, very useful for library boards, just to um, keep up with how to do, be a library board. But main page for library board certification, I'm not gonna go into a huge detail on this, I'm just gonna show you briefly. Um, the, um, how you can become certified. As I, as I showed, mentioned before, you'll see some boards don't have anything. You have to um, submit CE activity activity for your board, and then we know that you are trying to be, um, be certified, and we start tracking it. Um, we have, uh, you can check your certification status, what I was just showing you. Um, we have a link here, a specific CE reporting form for library boards. 
So you can put down um, one activity and list multiple people. You don't have to do one at a time for each person. So if like all five board members sat through one workshop, like this work thing, training we're doing here, you just list all their names. Um, yeah, leave page. <coughs> and um, to apply for certification you do have to just submit this so that we know that you are trying to you, you have to submit this at a certification application first just let us know that you are actually working towards that so that when we do receive ce forms we know why we know that it's not just um, you know a mistake or something but that you are wanting to become um, certified um, there's lots of things you can do to um, earn certification as a board uh, generally speaking, it just needs to be something that has to do with being a board member, uh, running, um, doing your job as a library board member. Uh, if you have any questions about what does qualify, what doesn't, Holly Duggan, who is our CE coordinator, continuing education coordinator, she is the person to talk to and ask, does this qualify, does this not? And she will let you know yes or no. Um, we have lots of links to specific things that you can do, trustee academy courses, short takes for, for trustees, um, that we um, pay for to for libraries to have access to through the United for Libraries website. Um, this is the organization for friends and foundations and board members. So we pay, um, the state of Nebraska pays for all library staff and board members to have access to all these trainings. So we have lots of things out there available for you. Um, there's just some lists here of what the different topics are. There are some other videos here that are through other states that you can watch theirs to earn CE credits. Um, Encompass live sessions that have been held that are related that are trustee and board, which is board related. You can watch any of these. Um, as I mentioned, the United for Libraries, they have not they have those trustee training specific things, but they also have various monthly webinar series, monthly work things that they do, other events, conferences. As you can see here, there's a huge list of things that your board members can attend. Um, and it's not just online, you can do things in person too. So, you know, attending in-person workshops that are about library board, you know, if something is done at the Nebraska Library Association Conference or through some, um, through your uh, regional library system or something, uh, you can attend those as well. So your board needs to be certified 20 hours every three years. Also, your library director has to be certified. It's a very similar situation. Uh, but you have to do more. Uh, the library director first to decide what level you need to be certified at is based on your education. Um, if you've attended any sort of library school, or if you just have a high school, if you have a high school diploma, GED, um, anyone is eligible for uh, certification. Uh, it just depends on if you have attended something that is library related, education wise, you do not have to work, do our extra basic skills courses. Uh, you've already done some sort of education that is library science related. If you haven't, which is the case in many, many of our libraries, we know that's why we have our basic skills courses. So as you can see here, um, you have your high school diploma, but you have not done any higher education, you do uh, basic skills courses. Um, if you've uh, done some sort of uh, higher education work, uh, gone to college or university of any sort, but it's not library science degree that you have, you have to do our basic skills courses. Um, basic skills classes are offered throughout the year. Um, there is a schedule um, of, of them. They happen um, regularly. There's Most of them are two-week courses, some are a month. Um, they're all done online and you have three years to, if you do need to do the basic skills classes, you have three years to do all of the required courses. Um, and so you don't have to do every, you know, whole one year and do them all that one year. You they'll have, they'll come up every year. Um, in addition to, if you didn't, if you have a library degree, you just have to do continuing education hours, 45 hours of CE hours in your three years. So anything related to your job attending workshops. Um, going to conferences, presenting at conferences and presenting workshops, you can earn CE credits per presenting. You, you earn double for that, actually. So if you presented at the Nebraska Library Association Conference, or if you presented an Encompass Live for me, you can you will receive CE credit for that. Um, so if you have a library science degree of any sort, you just have to do those 45 CE hours every year. If you don't have a library science degree the first year, you become, um, you apply for certification, you have to do your basic skills classes and do the 45 hours. Um, after that, you just have to do 45 hours every year to keep your, every 
three years to keep your certification up to date. You do also have to apply to the program. Just like with the board, you have to submit an application telling us that you are actually the reason you are doing this work and attending these workshops is um, because you are trying to keep either get, earn, or renew, keep up your librarian certification. So you've got to submit this application first. And as soon as we have this, then we know anytime you submit something to us or you attend something, we will add it to your record. Um, so attending this workshop here today, actually, I take the list of everyone who attended this and I pass it on to Holly um, and um, Mary Geibel, who's our assistant, admin assistant in our department, and they automatically add your CE. So if you attended something here at the Library Commission, you don't have to submit and tell us we know and we do it for you. If you attend something, attend something else, some, uh, anything else that we haven't done, then you do have to submit a um, uh, form. Uh, there is a link here about how to earn CE for librarians. There's lots more information here because you have more hours you need to do. Um, you can take courses, webinars, workshops, things in person, online, um, like I said, teaching, all sorts of things. And there is a report form to submit uh, for anything that is not attended from the Library Commission where we already know that you did it. So you would use that form to submit these CE hours. Same thing, if you're not sure what counts, contact Holly and ask, and she will uh, work with you on that. You can also look up and check your record. Um, this is not something I can show, this is personal to you, as the, uh, you so I'm not gonna look at this like we looked at the board one. But, um, so you can look up in here, um, your name and password, there is a look up for your password if you don't remember and didn't know what that was. Um, and then you can see how many hours you've submitted that we know of and how many hours you have left. So you can always double check your own record here um, to see where you're at and how, um, to make sure we've received something um, that you submitted or, or to see how many more hours you need. Um, when you do submit that CE form, activity form, that is something manually that Mary does. So do give her some time. It's not an automatic thing where it automatically is added to your record. It does take her about a week or so to get that in. You see, we say allow at least 10 days for something to show up in your CE record from when you actually submitted it or from when you attended something. All right, any questions about uh, board or librarian certification? All right. As I said, they both um, feed into your accreditation. They are required. They're one of the 12 minimum qualifications that your board is certified and your library director is certified. Additional staff can also have be certified and you can earn a few more points towards your accreditation if they are, um, but your director is required to be. Now, um, as we are getting ready to start up this year's um, accreditation process for any libraries that are up for renewal um, or who have submitted the public library survey, I will be double checking to see if your director is certified and if your board is. And if you are not, we will <clears throat> we'll have to have a discussion about um, what we need to do to get you on track for that. Um, we can, if you want to talk about, we will talk about why you're you know, misdoing your hours, uh, what you need, how much time we could give you. So we'll set up a plan for you to maintain or re-earn your certification, either for your board or for you as the library director, um, so that we can also continue on with your accreditation. So we'll be checking into that. Um, the last thing you need to do is submit a community needs response plan. Um, this is a big thing, and it is one thing that sometimes uh, does uh, takes a lot of work <laughs> for libraries to put together sometime. If you have a previous one, it's great. You can just take that one and modify it. But if you've never done one before, you will have to do one from scratch. I'm just going to briefly look at this here. Um, as I said, we do have the um, three-hour workshops coming up where I'll get dig much more deeper into this and into the accreditation application form with all the questions on there. Um, this is just a little overview today, um, but you um, have to put together a document um, where you meet, have these seven elements in it. Um, it's basically, it used to be called a strategic plan, uh, but that was too broad a term and it kind of con confused a lot of libraries. So we changed and called it a community needs response plan, a plan for how you're going to respond to the needs of your community from the library. Um, so looking out into your community, seeing what's going on, seeing if there's something you could do to help. Um, 
and coming up with some goals. So kind of a guide for you. We have lots of resources on here about what you need in a plan, um, examples of other libraries' plans. So these are great to look at and duplicate if you want to um, you know, model them as, as a template. Um, we have, um, as I said, we changed, we did make some changes to communities response plans also in 2022. We, um, last year we had a, um, we brought together a review team to review and do a self-evaluation of accreditation and community needs response planning because um, it had not been um, evaluated since 2013 um, in the current incarnation of it. So um, we made some changes last year to hopefully make things easier and um, on libraries. So there are some changes to uh, the sections, some of the sections and some of the information you need to include in your community needs response plan. Um, but these previous ones still have good resources. These two new ones um, here are some examples of libraries who submitted them last year that are good. So I highly recommend taking a look at those if you're looking to either update your current plan or write one for scratch. We have help guides about all the different sections here. And like I said, we'll get more de into detail with all of this um, in the um, longer workshops. But you can look at this if you want to um, ahead of time and see what you would need to do um, and look some, at some other libraries' examples of plants. But this is a document, as it says here, that does need to be also submitted to me. So there's two things you'll submit to me. The uh, um, community's response plan, which would be a Word document, PDF, however you want it, that you email or mail to me. And then the accreditation application form, which is submitted online. And then those two things I take together and look them over and uh, see if we you get re-accredited or earn your accreditation for the first time. There are uh, three levels of accreditation that I've already been mentioning, uh, bronze, silver, and gold. Uh, Yes, when this was first, when we first did this new version of accreditation, it was the Olympics were happening. I've heard the story, and it was actually uh, jokingly said, "How are we going? What are we going to call our new levels? We have this new way of uh, doing accreditation, and someone said, oh, let's do bronze, silver, and gold, like the medals." And they said, "Oh, actually, that's a good idea." So it is. <laughs> um, you earn points for each guideline that you meet on your accreditation application. Depending on how many you earn, you're either bronze, uh, silver, or gold. Minimum is 175 points. Um, previous versions of accreditation ha were much more stringent, where you had to meet all the criteria in this long list to become bronze. And then now there's some extra criteria to, that you also have to meet to become silver and even more to reach gold. Um, so it was the same for every library. Uh, that wasn't working. So um, in 2013, accreditation was revamped to do this point system where you can earn points for what you're good at at your library. Each community is going to be different, what your community needs, what you're doing for your community, what you do in your library as services and programming and things. And um, we wanted you to basically be, you know, what's what's going great in this community is going to be totally different than what's in this other community and you both should earn points and be able to earn accreditation based on what you're doing that fits your community so this uh way of um tracking it um seems to work much better there are um the accreditation application has five different general categories um, governance and planning, resources, services, cooperation and collaboration, and communications. And we're going to look at a preview application of this just to show you briefly what it looks like. Uh, the information that you submit into your public library survey, which I said is required to even become accredited, some of that information is automatically fed into your accreditation application form because some of those things that you, that you um, report to us are used to decide if you can earn points for them. So rather than having you re-enter all this information that you already submitted to us in the survey, we automatically dump it into um, your ap application. Uh, there are also some peer comparisons that are done using that public library survey information. Um, these nine guidelines here, you are actually compared to libraries who are similar in size of your community. 15% um, above, above or below your legal service population. So we look for the size of your community, find libraries the same size, and then we do a comparison. If you um, either meet or um, the average of those libraries or the um, uh, median of those libraries, and you can see down here, that's a map thing, value lying at the midpoint when the statistics are all arranged in size order. If you meet either one of those, you earn the points. 
um, it seems to be more uh, more it's fair to compare you to other libraries who are similar size to you rather than anything else. Um, there have been some libraries since we went to this this version of it. There have been some libraries who said, ah, oh, it doesn't really work for us though. Our our library, even though we're similar in size, there's all these other things going on. Um, we have looked at it and we did some evaluation last year and changing and adding any other criteria like um, amount, you know, uh, budget or other things um, it didn't really change who you were compared to. Um, it, it turns out after digging into other 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 data, this 15% still ended up with the same libraries you were being compared to. Um, so we're going to stick with that. Uh, if you do um, have any issues with who you are being compared to, you can always reach out to us and we can work with you on that too. Um, for some libraries, there are not communities of the same size in Nebraska. And if we if we come up with not enough libraries to have something you know meaningful, we do reach out and look um, bring in um, statistics from libraries in potentially Iowa or Kansas nearby to us, similar types of states, similar sizes. Um, the Public Library Survey is a national survey, so all all libraries across the country are doing it. So we can find the data from other states and help to bring you know gather some good peer comparisons. Uh, all right, so we're going to look at the preview application now just briefly so you can see what it's like. Um, so actually, the first thing you do when you go into the application is you are going to get those 12 criteria, and you've got to check all of them on the live form once it goes live. And once you've checked them all off, then it will let you apply. Um, the form's not turned on yet right at the moment, so we can't, that won't work. But once you check all of them, then you can go into the application, which is, we're gonna look at the preview one, which is just a static form. So you can see the kind of questions that will be asked when you do yours. Yours will be personal to you. Um, you will log into this using um, the same login username and password that you use to submit your public library survey, that Bibliostat password. Um, don't want you to have to remember a whole nother password. <laughs> so um, the same script password you use for that, you'll use for this, and then it will know what your li who li which library you are and will pull in your public library survey data into your accreditation application form. But for today, we're just looking at the preview application um, so you can just see what is going to be in there. Um, you'll see there are, um, there we go. The help things uh, question mark that I talked about is here. You'll see it within the application for some of these. If you click on that, it pops up with a new window and brings you right to um, that section of the help. So anything that has a question mark, you can click on and you'll get more information about in a help guide. Anything that has, as you can see here, a green check or a red X was based, was automatically pre-filled for you from your public library survey. You can't change any of those. Um, so if it has a green check mark, it says you meet that qualification. If it has a red X, you don't. Um, of course, this first one here, you meet the 12 minimum qualifications because you checked them off on that first screen. Um, anything else that does not have a green check is something that you can check off yourself. This is in a live form, so it's not going to happen. But um, as you check these off, you will earn points. It shows you how many points each item is worth. Um, there will be a box that will pop up and tell you here's how many points you are at and it will do a running total of them showing you throughout the form as you're checking things off, or checking and unchecking things, how your points total is going. Um, so we have our governance and planning, uh, resources, you can see all the ones that relate to come in from your survey. Um, certification level, your library director, here's one that you have to meet, as I mentioned. Uh, there's a technology section. Um, and questions about your collection at your library, lots of things here compared to other libraries. So all these ones with green checks, you'll be compared to other, um, do those peer comparisons to other libraries similar in size to yours. Services that you offer and anything ways that you collaborate and, um, with other organizations and then how you communicate and share the resources. You'll see, oops, um, here at the bottom, there is a point total right here. By default, it's just 96 points because all of the um, public library survey ones are checked off. Uh, but then you would start checking boxes and those points would go up as you, for any of these things that you do. 
and you'll be able to see how where you end up in um, your points total and what level of um, accreditation you end up at. Uh, when you are also in your live form, here in this yellow box will be a new but a button. We don't see it here because we don't have a specific library we're looking at, of course. But there will be a box here that says peer libraries. And you can see when you're in your form who are your peer libraries. So you can just find out, oh, these are the ones I'm compared to. Sure, that makes sense. Um, if you question that or you're like, yeah, I don't think these are right. Contact Sam and he can work with you on who your peer libraries are. We do know, you know, this is um, by default, he just does it based on um, the legal service area. But then we do actually look at the libraries too, and we do sometimes tweak and pull some out or add some because we know it's not coming up with a really good comparison. Um, so there is some, you know, uh, human interaction done with that. It's not just all automated for that comparison. But if you have questions about it, um, you can ask. He can also give you the um, answers, the public, the, the actual these other libraries answers to their questions on the public library survey that's all public information so he can put together some data on you if you want to see well what did the other libraries answer i mean this is saying i did or didn't you know meet their um my peer group for this well i want to know what they are doing and he can get you that data uh, any questions about the application form? As I said, during our longer workshops, I do go into much more detail about some of these questions with more explanation and information about it. Today, we're just talking about in general, here's the thing that you'll need to submit um, that you can know, you can take a look at this now and just see um, the kind of questions you may need to ask. Okay, sorry. Um, I just got a notice from someone that quit. Not a question, but it says, uh, sorry, I have to pop out. Um, and I understand we did just hit 11 o'clock and that's okay. Uh, we have goats at story hour. Do we get extra points for that? Um, I, you, I'm assuming you collaborated with someone to bring those goats in. The library just doesn't own goats. <laughs> um, so, um, that could be something you could, uh, if there's someone you worked with to do that kind of programming, or if it's something under your outreach programs. Uh, was it targeting a certain audience? There's ways you can work that in there and get some points. Yes, definitely. Explain about your goats in your in your um, uh, plan. I'd love to hear more about that. <laughs> All right. Anybody have any other questions about the application form? Um, go ahead and type in your question section. As I said, we did just hit 11 o'clock. It's 11.02 um, by my clock here. Um, we did start a few minutes after 10 a.m. That's okay. Um, but we'll go as long as it takes um, for any questions you all have and anything else I still need to wrap up uh, we're talking about today. We won't get cut off. Um, if you do need to leave, as this one person does, that's okay. As you know, we're recording the whole show. And you can always watch the rest of it later at your convenience. All right, so that's the application form. As I said, once you are invited to apply, when you receive that email from me on uh, July 1st, um, you would go into the live accreditation application form um, where using, and you will log in and see, yeah. Um, when this goes live, when you get to here, before you get to here, you will have to type in your username and password. Like I said, as I said, that Bibliostat username and password, and then it will let you get into the form, and then it knows which library you are. There will also be a link right in the email saying click here to go and you know, do your application form and everything. All right, does anybody have any questions? Um, let me just check and see. And then I make sure I've got everything. All right. All right. So as I said, um, on July 1st is when you get invited to apply. Um, and that is when the application form will go live. However, your community needs response plan, you can start working on that, on that at any time. 
um, that you may want to need to do focus groups, talk to people in your community, get some information that will you know feed into that. So you do not have to wait to do that. You can be working on that now. Um, if you have a draft version of that or just some ideas, you can reach out to me and I can evaluate that ahead of time, even before the July 1st, that's okay. Um, so you can start working on that right now if you want to. You don't want to be you know, rushing through that. For anyone who is interested in the history of the program, I'm waiting to see if anybody has any questions. We do have a link down here about our accreditation program. And you can see here, it started back in 1986, um, where we first started talking about guidelines for library excellence. And th the guidelines have been revised and updated throughout the years. Um, 2013 was the last big change when we went from the um, kind of hard line levels to the point system that we have now. Um, and then just last year, we did do a self-evaluation self of the program, um, trying to, we hadn't looked at it yet, to, and just to seeing since 2013 how it's gone. Um, we brought together a group of library directors and our regional library system directors to discuss um, what could, changes could be made. And we did make some updates, clarifications, some questions have been tweaked um, at, to make them easier. Uh, and the community needs response plan, a few changes to make it easier and making it that five-year um, period too. All right, so that is pretty much everything, the basics of accreditation. Um, why you want to be accredited, um, the benefits you can receive from it, when things are going to happen. Look for an email from me July 1st if you are being reaccredited, or this year, or if you've submitted this public library survey and are wanting, um, um, we can invite you to become accredited. Um, look at your accreditation application, start working on your community's response plan right now if you want to. Um, there's a lot of data in there. Uh, and sign up for our workshops that we have coming up um, next to next week and to the week after that. Those are my more in-depth where we'll get into how to write a community's response plan, all the different parts, get into a lot more about that. And we'll go much deeper into the accreditation application form and going through all of the different questions that are in there to give you more um, detail about that. All right, does anybody have any questions before we wrap things up for today? Uh, type into your questions section. If you have a microphone, I can mute you. I just wanna make sure anyone has anything you wanna ask right now. I don't wanna cut you off while you're still thinking about it. I wanna be able to answer um, you today um, if you're thinking of anything right now. All right, I don't see any desperate questions coming in right now. That's okay. Oh, of course, something comes up, pops up as soon as I say that. I knew it. <laughs> uh, question is, if you have multiple outreach projects, do you earn points for each one? Um, nah, no, no. Um, let's go into the preview application here. You can see um, under the outreach section, it just has... Um, Wait, not too far. No, you don't earn extra for each one. No, um, you earn six points if you have any sort of outreach that you're doing um, here. Uh, if you have certain programs and things that you were doing that are based that were mentioned in your community's response plan you, and to, to tar certain target audiences, you list them all here. Um, but you don't earn for each outreach that you have, just the fact that you are doing outreach at all. Um, and if you're collaborating with anyone, 
Um, same thing here. You collaborate with local entities, you can earn 10 points, and it doesn't matter if you have one or 20 <laughs> um, different entities. So more of a general thing, are you doing it at all? And then in some cases, you may explain more about that in your community's response plan, possibly. All right. Um, I think I will wrap things up for today. Um, you all know where to reach me, though. Uh, email krista.porter at nebraska.gov. If you uh, do have any questions um, about it, look at the community's response planning info. Look at the preview application form to familiarize yourself with any of the questions that are going to be on there when it goes live. Uh, sign up for our workshops if you are um, want to learn, like I said, more in depth about planning, the community needs response plan and the application form. And look for that email from me on July 1st if you are due for reaccreditation or if you are um, submitted your survey and you may be accredited for the first time. We love to have, we're always getting new, a lot more libraries added. So every year we've always had a few and we want to keep going with that. <laughs> All right. I am going to go back to my Encompass Live website here. All right, as I said, that will wrap it up for today's show. Thank you everybody for being here today. Um, it will be posted to our archives um, section here, as I mentioned, um, by the end of the day tomorrow, as long as GoToWebinar and uh, YouTube cooperate with me. Um, I will also put a link to it on the accreditation website as well, since it is related to accreditation, so you'll be able to find it through there as well for today's um, recording. Um, and then after all four of those longer workshops are done, a recording will be available um, off of those web pages as well. So that's it for today. Um, I hope you join us next week when we are going to read the rainbow, serving the LGBTQ plus community in your library. Uh, Lane Gibson is at our Lincoln City Libraries here in Nebraska, and they're going to talk to us about um, what you can do to build a more inclusive and welcoming library. Um, this is a, a workshop we had scheduled a couple months ago, but due to illness had to be rescheduled. So if you were looking at this, you thought, saw, you thought you saw this before, you did, uh, but we weren't able to do it. And Lane's finally coming back to do this with us next week. So definitely sign up for that one and any of our other workshops we have coming up. We've got May and June getting filled in. Um, keep an eye on the schedule for any other, uh, for, as I add um, more dates, more topics in. And hopefully we'll see some of you getting renewed for your accreditation or becoming a live accredited library for the first time. We'd love that. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>